Oh, there we go. Yes. Just like that. Oh, yo, God. we are back with another episode mm-hmm. of Wasted Podcast. Yeah. So good to be back. So good to be back. That's good. Go. It's a good scene, y'all. Yeah, good scene, good, good, good. Yo, it's beautiful weather outside. Yes, you know, indeed. I hope wherever you at is beautiful too. Yes, yeah. Indeed. You know what I'm saying? Yo, if you're listening on Spotify, make sure to give us a follow. That's mm-hmm. what it is, I think. I if, believe. If you're um mm-hmm. on YouTube, like, subscribe, all that. Mm-hmm. And uh, my name is Ant WM Twenties. I go by the name of Cool Hands. My name is Alejandro WM Twenties. And uh, goats introduce themselves. My name is Cody Glenn. Uh, I'm a tattooer based out of Long Island. I've been tattooing about three years. Uh, I've been at the shop that I'm at, Wild Child and Merrick, for about five years. Uh, I've known Fraden and Anthony for since going back to about 2016. We yeah. uh, wow. met that the the very famous uh, Nassau Community College. <laughs> what a wonderful place. Yeah. <laughs> Got along doing some video stuff. Uh, clearly, you guys have far surpassed me there. <laughs> uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Yeah, Thank man. you for coming. Thanks. For Yo, um, so wait a second. You guys even just started chopping up because you were like into the video stuff too back then? Like, I don't remember. Well, so I just... we were in a film class. Oh, so that's I, what yeah. it was. And I was just like, yeah. hey, this is just funny. You know? Yeah. I, was like, I like this guy. <laughs> yeah, because I, I didn't really remember like why, like I knew you, I know like I met you through Freighton, but I didn't remember how, I knew you guys knew each other from like college, but I didn't mm. know like how, you know. It's just it was just... that dude who used to have the, the, the polos and the matching socks. Yeah, Stephen something is our uh, film professor. Yeah, um, and he had like the like the, the kind of like cul de sac moldy <laughs> going on. He was a he was a cool dude. He was alright. So, uh, he loved that movie Bullet, uh, the Steve McQueen movie Bullet, and he showed uh-huh. us a clip of that. He got yeah. he got so Excited. intensely fired up about the Ford Mustang, and yeah. Fraden goes. I didn't know he was a Ford Mustang guy. He looks more like a Prius guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Bro. Yo, good times, man. That was a good yeah. era, I think. Oh, that was yeah. a good era. Yeah. Like, that, 2016, 17. Yeah, yeah. Like, sim- things, were, things were simpler back then. Oh, sure. Bro, I had just gotten into Nassau Word. in 2016. Yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. Good time, man. Yeah, it was a good time to be in Nassau. Yeah, congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, did you end up graduating? Uh, 2017, I believe. 17, okay. Yeah. Same year as me. Same year as me. So, where were you guys at with Waste in My Twenties when we, um, when you guys incorporated me into some of those projects? We really didn't have a Waste in My Twenties at the time. It was Bohemian Opera. It was Bohemian Opera. Yeah, that's what we went oh. by. Yeah, this that was like before we actually like ever got started really doing the the Waste in My Twenties series, which we we started doing with just like an old VHS camera or whatever the case is, and eventually that just became the name of the entire thing. But yeah, we were just doing the skits and stuff. Yo, it's funny because I still have the one that we had shot at your crib. Mm-hmm. I like I watch it from time to time. It's like wow, like You've come so far, right? Yeah, bro. <laughs> it's just like yeah, I would love to see that again too. Shit, yeah, it's on my phone. So. Oh, cool. No way. <laughs> nah, I have it on, on Dropbox. What, what was the background music for that one? Because the whole the, that idea, that concept was that we wanted to make like. Um, Something with a '90s theme, like '90s music. Yeah, uh-huh. it was uh, Lenny Kravitz. It ain't yes. over till it's over. <laughs> yes, yes, oh my yes, God. yes, yes. Yo, Lenny Kravitz is that guy, bro. I have to. Yo, Lenny, shout out to Lenny, bro. Shout out yeah. to Lenny. Shout out to Lenny. Yeah. Shout out to Lenny. Bro. Shout out to all the Kravitz. You know? Shout out yeah. to all the Kravitz. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we know about you. <laughs> Like, you know, you say the side. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> he's shooting up shots. That's what he does. Yeah. But yo, man, like. You were into, like, photography and stuff like that. Um, it seems that you kind of just had an interest in art. Yeah. When did that interest shift from doing, I guess, you know, photography-based things to just moving towards the uh, the tattoo route? So after I graduated in Nassau, I was at a uh, crossroads in my life, and I was like, got to figure this out. And it wasn't, like, immediately. I was like, oh, I'm going to become a tattooer. Mm. I actually uh, tried to become a lawyer, and uh, I failed miserably at that. So <laughs> I think all things worked out for the best there. So, okay. yeah, ultimately, I was just like, I kind of, like, wrote out, uh, you know, like, a long-term plan for myself. And uh, I had a lot of time to myself because I wasn't going to school. I was just working. Yeah. Uh, so I was finally getting back to, like, visual art. I mean, my whole life I've drawn and painted through high school. I was uh, in, you know, AP art classes and things like yeah, that. Yeah, AP art? Sure. Jeez. That's crazy. Yeah, I didn't even know you had that. Yeah. 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 They had that where we would. Nah. Yeah. Oh, man. He was advanced art, man. Yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. Nah, but, uh. Just kind of going back to that that long term plan that you're right now. How closely do you, would you say that you stuck to it? I guess being a few years from it. 
That's a good question. Uh, the first two years were very close, and then uh, mm-hmm. you know, like everyone's got a plan until you get punched. So yeah, yeah. You know, like I had reached the point of like um, I guess attaining or like having in my grips like what I wanted, and then mm-hmm. once I had that, I essentially just needed to like script a new plan. So I say the five year plan got shaved down like a three year three year plan, then had to reevaluate and yeah. you know going through like a tattoo apprenticeship. Uh, apprenticeship it'll. Uh, Fuck with you. So, can I cuss on this? Of course. Yes, of course. <laughs> yes, you can. Of fucking course. Yeah, cool. Yeah, it'll uh, it'll screw with your head um, right. in good ways and bad ways. You know, things that mm-hmm. um, people that go through uh, that process say like it takes breaking you down to be able to build you up stronger. So. Yeah. yeah, it it seems like that's that, that's like the case with a lot of uh like the arts when you're in the, in the beginning phases like i've heard people use that that exact terminology in, refer, in reference like acting mm-hmm. like yeah you know who actually i heard say that the dude who uh who played mike uh no luke cage oh word he oh, was that? He yeah was mike about, coulter mike coulter he, yeah. was, he was on this this the interview series and he was just talking about the process of him i guess uh going to school for acting and he used the exact like terminology so yeah. i'm like what does that mean exactly? Because I, I feel like I've never had that experience. Oh, you should try it. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's, um, at least in my experience, because it's kind of similar in like fashion design and everything like that. Like it's super competitive. Mm-hmm. And the majority of your apprenticeship is just seeing how much you can handle and then pushing you further than that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's kind of like weeds out the people like who, who wants it more. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's all about who's going to have the drive to work harder because you could be as talented as you want. And I, I know a lot of fashion designers who are way more talented than I am. I'll say that straight up, but they just didn't have the work ethic. Yeah. You know what I mean? Cause they were, I don't want to say like they were weak, but they just couldn't stomach the industry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm just assuming that that's probably like the same thing with the tattoo yeah. apprenticeship. Yeah. That's hugely a part of it. It just teaches you the work ethic and teaches yeah. you how to, not fly off the rail when you have a bad day it teaches you to just persevere through the tough points uh, mm-hmm. and also i think just uh, more generally as an artist like it is beneficial to work a long period at some style or something um, but if you like unless you really reach the pinnacle of that it it's important to like take a step back from it because if you just keep plugging away at the same thing you're just going to be doing the same thing your whole life so, like sometimes it helps to lose everything that you kind of know like just mm-hmm. scrap it start back up from a new foundation and you, i think you'll learn a lot more that way that's nice. interesting yeah nice what was the first tattoo that you gave to somebody else uh, i was a cockroach on a girl that i worked with chewy uh still a good friend of mine um and she's uh a god uh what it, She's a saint uh, for sacrificing her skin to me, and uh, <laughs> that's funny. I was actually just looking back at it the other day. Um, yeah, so normally how the apprenticeship kind of thing goes is like you'll just spend your time at the shop uh, in the first, you know, timetables are different for everybody. For me, it was like a year of just uh, doing, you know, the bitch work, mm-hmm. um, just cleaning up after people, watching things, um, just being an asset to the people that are going to be mentors to you. And then once you kind of gain trust from people, then you'll be able to start the tattooing families and friends for free. Do that for a period until you build your chops up to where then you can start charging people. Uh, and then finally you get to the point where you can just charge and take like customers through the door and stuff. Mm-hmm. How much time did it take you to get to that point where you were charging people? Um, you know, I never really thought about it because... It's a profession, so it's important to make money, but I was never, like, so hung up on the money. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, But, I I don't know, a couple months of, not like I was just doing stuff for free. I would sometimes, like, have to have my my, uh, supplies covered and stuff. Okay, fair. Until, like, where I was at, um, where I was, like, charging a full price, that would be, say, competitive with other people. Right. Probably a few months. A few months? That's pretty good. It it was a weird timetable for me, too, because I... uh, like our we shut down for that period um due to the, the covid lockdowns right. so i was like kind of just phasing myself out of the apprenticeship like as we shut down right so we, i was tattooing like walk-in customers for like two uh like maybe two months and then we shut down i was like oh okay 
so we went through that, and then I kind of just came out on the other side, and then like, nobody acknowledged like that the graduation of the apprenticeship, like, which is usually you know kind of like a ceremonious kind of thing. Mm, they'll, yeah. you know, they'll paddle you or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, I just like came out of the COVID lockdown. I was like, oh, well, everything's different. Get to work. <laughs> so, nice. yeah. so were you the only like one learning at your spot? Or because yeah. like, is it usually like that, or are sometimes people learning like at the same time? No, it depends. Um, Everyone at the shop that was an apprentice at the shop when I uh, came in, but like they had graduated, they usually had at least one or two other people to like lean on that were other apprentices. Mm. So through my apprenticeship, there was like maybe two or three people that had come and gone in my tenure. Uh, so I don't think anybody ever really like at the shop like took notice of it. They kind of just like, you know, I was flattered that they trusted me to like handle that the workload that used to be a workload of like two to three people and that was like on me mm -hmm. um so again like stressful periods but i'm thankful for them because they brought me to this point today yeah we're, mm -hmm. these other guys are super tatted well he's not super tatted no nah, he, that, that's the yeah, one he's he's this that's guy's over here apparently you did work i did yeah, yeah. oh yeah, yeah. i see I, I told him when i seen him i'm like yo this shit looks so like symmetrical Thank like you. that's something i, I notice a lot when, when like tats because when something's like not symmetrical unless it's like intentional it throws me off a lot yeah so yeah. i was like nah this shit looks pretty good so Thank I, you. I know that like, i can see the progress in the work you know what i'm saying and appreciate it, it. it it makes me feel good to just be able to see like people i like i, I watch start something yeah. progress yeah. in it it don't mm -hmm. even gotta be me it's just it's yeah fun, you know yeah, yeah. it's cool it's like, super cool because i remember it like obviously like just we like since then just been following you know what i'm saying and i just remember it used to be just a lot of like paintings like i mentioned to you and then saw you doing tattoos i'm like yo that's super that's super cool because i like even before i had tattoos you know I, tattoos were always cool to me so mm -hmm. um and then i just kept seeing your work and stuff like that but then one day you know i was talking to our mutual friend freddie freddie shout out to oh, freddie yeah. and shout out freddie. he has his whole back nearly well, pretty yeah. His whole bag is like, I was like, yo, this is pretty that cool. That piece is crazy. And then come to bro. find out, Cody did it. All of yo, it. He was like, yo, yeah. all of it is Cody. And then I was like, wait a second. I, I don't know if he sent me the profile picture. I mean, the prof your profile, or if he just said where you were, where he got it, and your name. And I was like, wait a second. This this is, I know this person. You know, so <laughs> I was like, it's so all coming me, back. So yeah. like, I gotta, yeah. you know, I actually gotta pull up and. Yeah, man, it, it, I love how it came out. Like, it came out really cool. Yeah. Can we show that to the to the audience later? At some yeah, point? no, we later definitely got to show it. Yeah, yeah, cool. yeah. I'm gonna have to get my next piece. I'm thinking, you know what I'm saying? We're gonna have to work together. Yeah, to get something. Yeah, yeah, something man. Out. Like the and it wasn't even like the. F I'll say we were in there for what like four hours. Well, five hours, but four hours like ink to skin. Yeah. So. Um, the first three hours were, were smooth sailing too, honestly, like obviously, cause this is the knee area is very, like I, my, it's sensitive, I'll, you know, Probably. I don't, yeah, know I don't have mine done, but I bet. <laughs> so, but you were just, the way you were like manipulating the skin. So certain areas didn't hurt so much. It was like, that's why it was like smooth sailing up until the, the shading. That's the part where yeah. you really can't do nothing about yeah, it. You know what sure. so You have to like go in and yeah, on yeah. it. Yeah but um it's like i'm in there man yeah <laughs> going in yeah. and we only did like what like two or three small breaks yeah just went went yeah man you sat great you're tough as nails i appreciate it <laughs> I tried, yo. but in my head i was like don't even think about like yeah, how long right? you know yeah. what i'm saying because i feel like for me i don't know what do you think like when you get like tattoos do you ever like if it's not already talked about like how long it'll take or if you don't like have a rough estimate do you just like you'd rather not know how long or you want to know like end time no, because I, I could never even answer people like how long is something going to take when I'm doing it. I mean, not really uh, too closely. I can estimate. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's I have I have a pretty bad concept of time generally mm -hmm. day to day. And especially like when you're focused and you're working on something, I mean, you can check the clock yeah. and stuff like when you take a break. But yeah, yeah. I'm not really conscious like how much time has passed or is passing. So. Yeah, I feel you. You don't want to be limited to like with right. the time. Like you want to manage yeah. expectations because if you're working Facts. on a piece and then someone says, oh, well, it's been six hours already. Uh -huh. Like I feel like you don't really want to have them waiting on that. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Did, did, did you feel like it was long that day? 
Uh, it took, so the knee is a difficult spot to like get the design prepped on there. I remember that took us about an a, hour, like, yeah. like a half hour just to figure it, the sizing and stuff. Cause I had shown you a couple different variations of it and then getting the stencil on that was mm -hmm. like three or four times just to mm -hmm. get it. So it comp the design complemented the, uh, the part of the body instead of like working against it. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, like I told you while we were going, I was like, this is really like the hard part. This is yeah. like the taxing part that yeah. like I'm sweating through them once it's actually like. Yeah. Tattoo in the skin there, to, you know, I don't know how it was for you, but it was easy for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's one thing that definitely I, I even commented on is like the prep work. It just sets it up for like a, you know, higher success rate or just like yeah. for it to look good. You know what I'm saying? That's true with anything. Right? Anything. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So do you guys find that you do more prep work these days than you did, say, back when you were doing a Bohemian Opera? Because I just watched you guys set this all up, and it was like a well-oiled machine. Like a... uh, that's, one, that's, one way, that's one way to put it. <laughs> I mean, I don't uh, – I think that uh, we put in hours, so mm -hmm. it kind of makes it a little bit easier. But, uh, like – there's always room for improvement. Yeah, yeah. You know like, what I'm yeah, like you know, life will hand you your ass sometimes when you start to <laughs> overestimate. And, you know, I mean, that happens from time to time. Like, we've definitely seen, I guess, the result of not pre-prepping. Yep. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, um, I think so to a certain extent. Yeah. I would have to say. Yeah. Uh, especially just, I guess, because we're, we're largely doing YouTube a lot. Knowing what exactly you're trying to get across and who you're trying to target yeah. is important because I mean, we know as well, you know as well as anybody else. Sometimes if you just kind of do with the wind, you know what I'm saying, it'll just go with the wind. Yeah, I want something to, that's gonna stick. Right. And prep definitely helps out with that because now I know where this shit goes. It has a place as opposed to just seeing where it falls. You know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I agree. Um, but like sometimes doing something just like with the wind that I. At least as an artist, that can like just benefit like your soul, like you know, do something for you. No, that's that's definitely mm -hmm. true. Like, do you guys ever like intermingle stuff like that? Like you work on like say I don't know your more serious content, and then do you ever just like kind of throw it and just be like, let's just have fun on this one and just kind of like do it for us. I think since we started doing like the since we started choosing our reacts, mm. I feel like that's one way that we've kind of just been like making it more mm. fun for us. That's, that's true. like it's like a break almost. Like you know, you need a break right. from like doing what, structure quote unquote, yeah exactly like the structure mm. and just do something different the uh, reacts are what you guys have been like kind of mostly focused on lately or yeah i was really pleased to see when i scrolled through your page you guys had like a long uh playlist of norm mcdonald reactions yes oh he's my, my all-time favorite stand-up he's the king I yeah. love R.I.P. Yeah. yeah norm was the first video of ours that really took off like the first norm reaction oh, really? was, it was the first one which video was it it was like uh, a reaction to this video called Norm Macdonald Saves Interviews. Yeah, I know a, that one. Mm -hmm. It's just a collection of him yeah. just, you know, being in interviews and just, just dropping like, just like effortless gems of comedy. Yeah. Yeah. So that one was like the first one. And uh, we just, we, we, we started doing a bunch of those and a bunch of other comedians and then yeah. eventually started moving in different directions as far as like uh, different types of content and stuff. Have yeah. you guys reacted to his uh, appearance on The View yet? Where he, mm, oh, are you familiar? Like the last one? No, the the like infamous one where he went on. It was like in the early 2000s. Oh, I know what you mean. He was like telling, the, it was like Barbara Walters and whoever else, that uh, Bill Clinton's a murderer. He's like, it's time to get murder out of the White yeah. House. Yeah. Nah, like, bro, nah. I, I don't think. If you guys have that one on the dock, yeah, bring me nah, back because I'd like shit. to sit in for that one. <laughs> nah, that one was hilarious. He was like, she was like, y'all don't read much. Like, how do you expect anybody to want to be with you if you don't read? I've got a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You just yeah. straight up with it, man. Yeah, yeah. And this is like his. He's just a smiley guy. I felt like you know yeah. what I'm saying. But so he'll just cut your throat while doing it. Like, it's, facts. It's, yeah. Like hearing about him kind of like gives me like courage to just be whoever the fuck I want to be. Same. Because like when you hear other comedians talk about him, they'll just tell you like, bro, would bomb on purpose. Hmm. And then like, especially in the beginning, you'd bomb on purpose. And then on the way out, he'd shake, shake everybody's hand. hand. Yeah. Like what kind of fucking savage shit is that, bro? <laughs> like yeah. that's, you're a different type of breed. Like yeah. I know, like this is a human, you kind of have this innate, fear of failure yeah mm -hmm. and if you fail by yourself nobody's around it's like it's still a failure but it's like i you know what i mean nobody got to see this you're feeling in front of a crowd of people mm -hmm. regularly 
or you could be killing. You know what I mean? It could, it could go either way. But I guess you really dread that that failure because yeah. when everybody sees it, it's like way more embarrassing. And he just tackled it head on. Like, nah, fuck that. I'm gonna do exactly what the fuck I think is funny. Yep. <laughs> you might find it funny. You may not find it funny. But I'm still gonna do what the fuck I want to do. And I I think that that's like that's amiable for sure. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. special. You don't yeah. see that a lot. Nah, mm-hmm. at all. That at takes all. a lot of balls for real. Yeah. Literally. I feel like yeah. that just comes down to like ego too, you know? Like if you're able to like put that shit aside, you can just do a lot more, you yeah. know? And like mm-hmm. this, or like cuz that like like you were saying like bombing on purpose, I would be so uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah. Like at, me personally, but if I had like I feel like I would want to try like if I'd be Way more confident if I could do that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah. you have to be. Yeah, but I think that segues back too to like what I was or what we brought up about. Um, some concentrate on like your work that where you have preparation for it and you have like a select target audience, but it does that. He's a perfect example of it, how it's beneficial to just sometimes go out in there and just do something for you. Yeah. Like you can see in his yeah. face, he's like, I'm gonna tell this joke. I don't care if people laugh. I'm laughing inside. And that's yeah. really, like, what kept him going all those years. Like, those pauses that he would have after he would say shit, just letting the crowd just react. I love that shit. Yeah. Like, yeah. And he would always laugh before he was telling, like, like a punchline or something. Yeah. Like that. He would laugh at his own joke, but for some reason with him, like, you just had to laugh with him because yeah. it was just so funny. Yep. Yeah. You know? Nah. Who was the other dude that we did? Um, Mitch. Mitch yeah, Hedberg. Mitch Hedberg was fired. Yeah, I'm talking yeah, about yeah. the uh, the dude who was like, "Is kissing and dance too, honey?" Oh, oh, Andrew Dice Clay. Oh yeah, yeah, bro. That, that man guy. was different. Yeah, bro. <laughs> that man was different. Like, just talk about fucking just no fucks. Like, absolutely <laughs> zero fucks. Like, you know, that's one of those things. Like, I love comedy. I think like comedy is like, as an art form, is like above most things, if sure. not all things. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because it's 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 a uh, philosophical mm-hmm. and it's uh, cathartic. Yes, but it's also just stupid sometimes. It can take all. <laughs> it can take. You can have all three of those things, which is just wicked. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I think you know, freedom of speech is something that that needs to be protected. He really took freedom of speech into his, <laughs> his, like he took that. You know what I mean? For real, for real. Yeah. Some of it's cringy now, obviously, because you know yeah. when people say certain things, it's like, uh, you know what I mean. But that's another dude who I have a lot of respect for. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. for his time, he fucked shit up, and he solidified himself as one of the people that you're gonna be like. Uh, what's the word when somebody you people like them or they hate them? Mm. It's not controversial. Polarizing. Sure. He's yeah. a polarizing figure. I think if you manage to be a polarizing figure in anything, you, you're you a success. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because people have an opinion on you. Yeah. Okay. Mm. But So, like, to hold, to weigh them against each other, like Norm and Dice, man. I love Norm. I'm not really a fan of Dice. I understand, like, why he was important to mm-hmm. his comedy mm-hmm. and the arts and stuff. But, like, that's a guy that uh, Dice made a career being, like, a character. Yeah, and I, I think it was almost you know like a, the Joker or something where like he had such fame playing that character. I think he just became that became character, character. You know, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. If, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's easier for people to sometimes maybe hit it with like a in just across any kind of like work or especially creative work to like hit hit it big with a gimmick. Right. But I think you'll kind of you'll burn out quicker that way. You right. see, with a lot of artists, you don't really have that staying power, and it's just you're. I feel like you're doing stuff that's not all that genuine. Compared to like a guy like Norm, you know. That's a no, that's a fair assessment. What do you think of a guy like Andy Kaufman? I'm not too familiar, but I, I the stuff that I've seen, I I like that. Uh, I like him better than Dice. I do too. Because yeah, I think he's just in. He was just insane. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think he could really help himself from being that way. Like I mean, because he 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 was a somebody who kind of used characters in a sense, not to the same degree as Dice, because, I mean, he would have multiple, yeah. you know what I mean? Dice kind of just had Dice Man, and that was it. Right. But one thing I liked about him was the fact that, like, he would somehow just, like, blur the lines between what's real and what's, like, just the act. Yeah. People were, like, uncomfortable with some of the things that he would do, and it's like that, that you ever, like, watch something happen where people don't know what to fucking do, so it'll be silence. And if somebody might laugh, and if yeah. another person might laugh, but it'll be scattered. Yeah, just <laughs> quiet laughter. Quiet yeah. laughter. It's like uncomfortable laughter. Awkward. Think, awkward laughter. That's a skill, too. Mm. I think that's a skill because yeah. at the very least, you're getting people to think. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? You have, like, the attention. Sometimes people, like, comedians make you laugh, but sometimes a comedian doesn't make you laugh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Sometimes mm-hmm. they'll just make you think. I think he's one of those guys that did it, not necessarily mm-hmm. in, like, a profound way, but just in the, like, blurring the lines part. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't you say, was it you who said that, like, you would want to try stand-up once? Yes. That's on my bucket list. Right. It's on my bucket list. I'm like, going to do that shit. Definitely, <laughs> like. I'll um, try it with you. I've always thought about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, there you go. There you go. That's fire. Now, that'd That's be fire. fucking litty, yo. Yo, you, do you know anybody? Do any of y'all know anybody who, like, personally who, like, was pursuing that or anything like that? Yeah. I know one person um, who was pursuing it. I don't know if he's still doing it. But, actually, we, we met him at, when we were doing a shoot one time. Um, this was, like, 2017. Uh, his name was Jason. You don't remember? Jason, Jason. Maybe. Yeah, regardless, mm. that's just on fire. Like just doing that, yeah. I feel like I'm not funny enough to do that. I feel like if anyone could do it, y'all two could do it. <laughs> yeah, I'll be. I don't know. I feel like this. I mean, you find your humor. Yeah, there's so yeah. many ways to go about it. Like, yeah, like I was watching Jim Carrey's like old stand up, and oh, he yeah. he would his routines would be like based off. Not really character based, but like impressions in a sense. Yeah, impressions, mm-hmm. yo, and just like an act where other people will just be like uh, more, you know, talking like Mitch. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Not nah, Mitch's. Mitch's comedy was special, dog. That he was just special. he would just keep one liners rolling. I mean, there was every joke yeah. was like a minute thirty to two minutes, yeah. and it was just like, like totally disjointed from everything. Every I, other I joke. I find that shit so fascinating. Me too. Bro. Yeah. Like, how do you? His mind was special, bro. Yeah. You like, have that's to. really what it was. You have to like and th- like the the whole one liner kind of style of comedy is even in that is so varied because mm-hmm. you have a Mitch, and then at the same time you have a Rodney. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> fucking Rodney, bro. Rodney yeah. was amazing. And then there's another dude. Yo, like, who was the dude that they mentioned in Goodfellas, King of the One Liners? I think he was. Uh, I don't know if that was a fake Rickles, comedian. Maybe? It Don might Rickles? have been Don Rickles. He was another dude who had some sick one-liners. He had like, I guess, he could string shit a little bit further than one-liners, but more so when he would just like, his insults, yeah. fucking top-notch, bro. Like, how do you, how does your mind work that quickly? Mm, to like the crowd? Yeah, bro. He would oh, insult. Man. Yo, like, crowd work is so di- different too. Like, yeah. that shit is a skill, bro. Like, yeah. how do you... I don't care for crowd work. You nah, don't like it like yeah, that? Yeah, because I'm not, like, I don't know. That's probably a big reason why I don't like Dice. I remember uh, Tracy Morgan told the story. He was on uh, that Michael K show. It's called Center Stage. It used to be on Yes. Mm-hmm. He told the yeah. story. The the long and the short of it is like he uh, somebody corrected him for doing crowd work because like it's it's kind of an affront, I guess, to like the people that pay money and they're gonna come oh. and try to come out and have a good time and like what if you fucking you know ruin their night? Like he was like you should be the one like you know cut yourself open and laugh at me. You don't like turn it on the crowd. Yeah. No. That that's a that's a fair. That's a fair assessment. I feel like there's a skill of doing it without, like, I don't know, certain people, you, you just know that, like, it's literally just fun. Like, yeah. I think yeah. that uh, Rickles was really good at insulting you, and then he'll, like, nah, I'm just fucking with you, I'm just fucking with right. you. Right. And then make, like, a face, it, it's, I, I don't know, certain people, when they when they do it, it's a skill, like, it, they have, like, a touch. Yeah. You know what I mean? Then you have other people who really just insult the crowd. Like, <laughs> like I remember watching, uh, What's his dude name? Uh, the dude who has the Charlemagne podcast, Andrew Schultz. I've seen oh him do crowd work. Oh my god, bro! He's pretty good at he's pretty good at crowd work, but yeah. I don't like it as much as like when like I feel like other people do it. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like it's kind of like filler sometimes. Maybe if yeah. you're just not feeling it or whatever. But mm-hmm. I think that it, in that in that regard too, it's it's impressive to just be able to just look at something. And then just make something out of it. You yeah. Know? Mm-hmm. Yo, did did do any of y'all are like fans of Dane Cook? I used to like his shit. Uh, I respect him. I don't really like nah. him. It's but I not respect my him. type of okay. comedy. I yeah, would mean, say. Nah, nah, not nah, mine either. But yeah. he's, he's clever. He's a mm. thief, apparently though. That's his for name. real. A thief? Yeah. Oh, but damn, they were saying, "What's that? What's that Mexican dude?" He, Mencia. Mencia. He is too, right? Yeah, yeah, but they said, uh, apparently he thief something from Louis. Mencia? Yeah. No, 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 no. No, Dane Cook did. Dane Cook. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then he, Louis had him on his TV show, so and they kind of they kind of smoothed it out. Smoothed it out, yeah. but it, they did it in a way where they were talking about the the the, the thing in, in the, the show in the show, which was cool. That's I, an awesome show. You guys, yeah, have seen one bits of my and favorites. Pieces. I haven't watched I, it much. I yeah. think I've seen it all the way because I, I, but it's been years, it's and, great. and they never um, 
it just ended, right? Yeah. 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 It just yeah. Ended. He ended up doing like a different show somewhere else. Mm-hmm. He did a. He released it on his own. It was weird. It wasn't really a comedy. He did it with Steve Buscemi. It was yeah, called yeah, Horace yeah. and Pete. Horace and Pete. And, and that was another. It was, it was kind of just like a Kaufman type thing where it was all just like I guess the comedy was in the sadness kind of thing. They would just mm-hmm. be like they were like two bar owners. They owned a bar for like the it was in the family, family. for like two hundred years. And they were all just like depressed and alcoholics and stuff. And oh was, my god! They did like six episodes of it. it was yeah, weird as hell. I think <laughs> that it was just the natural progression for him. Yeah. Because I mean. Like, I don't know. Have y'all ever seen Pootie Tang? No. Nah. <laughs> Just from the name alone, you can kind of get an idea of what type of movie it is. That was his movie. I don't know if he wrote it. Oh, really? He directed it for mm-hmm. sure. Louis? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Really? He directed that shit. And, like, you go from that end of the spectrum, it's, a, it's like, established that he's a, a genius, you know, comedically. Maybe you just want to do something... Just try your hand as a writer doing something mm-hmm. outside of comedy, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what I, that's what I took it took it for at least, you know. Right. Mm, that's wicked. <laughs> <laughs> message from our sponsors. <laughs> yeah, message from our sponsors. Nah, like, y'all remember that like, we used to talk about comedy a lot though. Like yeah. in school, we would talk yeah. about it. I remember you said that you weren't a fan of Robin Williams. I don't know. Are you still not a fan? No. Player? Yeah, I'm not. I never have been. Word. Yeah. Yo. I don't get it. Yo, I was at a. I don't ever go to bars either, but I was at some bar and some dude was just sitting there. He looked just like Rob, Robert Williams, bro. He had like the mustache and but shit. But did like you that. talk to him? That's the question. Uh, I mean, we just turned around and just told him that he looked like well, he was just drinking. He's like, "Oh wow, really?" Or something. <laughs> oh, wait, he probably heard it before. Yeah, he probably heard it before. Nice one, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> shit. All right, like we talked about my kind of like bucket list kind of thing, right? Mm. I kind of know yours. But, you know what I mean? I think that'd be interesting to see what other, like, bucket list kind of ideas people would like to do or try once before they kick it. You know what I mean? I think I know what yours is. Well, well, I don't even say it. Really? I know what it is. I think. I think. I don't know. Well, I don't. Damn. What would be? My, did we t- We probably, like, mentioned some shit before, like, talked about some shit. Like, some, I don't even know, man. Really? To be honest. Yeah. I thought, uh, can I tell you what I think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. DJing. Oh, oh, that's funny. It's funny you say that because, like, I don't ever, I haven't think, thought about it as a bucket list thing, mainly because, like, I'm not, I never thought about actually doing it for people. I'm just, like, I mean, if for you're going to do it by yourself, I feel like at some point in time, I'm just going to buy it. I can do just this. Do it. Okay, I see what you're saying. Like, it just, mm-hmm. like, pr- sure, yeah, that, that could make sense. That, that I mean, I definitely do want to, I've been saying it for, like, the past three months already. I want to get a, a DJ so controller. Strobe light. Yo, <laughs> fact, you know they, they heard it's party time. Yeah, right. It's party nah. time. Ooh. Oh, it is, it's gone. Wow. It's gone technical. And message oh. from our sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> Anything can happen. Anything can yeah. happen. What about you? And I never really give it too much thought, but you put me on the spot, and I say mm-hmm. like my whole life I probably would have dreamt to like be in the NFL. So I think I still got, uh, I still mm-hmm. got a shot. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I support you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. You used to right play now. football. You told me. I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't very good at it. But. Listen, what position? Uh, a lot of them, like hey, the defensive line, I, offensive line, linebacker. And yeah. yeah. I, I gave it up. I broke my leg and I gave it up to oh, draw shit. pictures and smoke weed. And stuff. There you go. There you yeah, go. It's all worked right. out. Yeah. I, think, yeah. I think that's a good way to go. Yeah. You know, it's funny that you say that. Like, I still remember the day that um, I think we pulled up and you were just giving away mad jerseys. I still have that. You had an Ohio State jersey <laughs> yeah. and I just grabbed it because, like, you know, I used to live there. And I still have it. It's, it's just over there in Ohio, just chilling. Big ass, oversized nice. Ohio football jersey. Yeah. Now he gave he gave me the Rondo and the and the and the KG. Oh, I nice. appreciate that. Oh, hell yeah! Day. But That's we love, we still got to get to his bucket list. Sure. Ideally. Oh man, I think high key. I feel like I've told y'all to before, but mm. like we never really stress on it too much. Mm. But like one of the things that I've always wanted to do since I was in middle school, um, I feel like we was just talking about this too. I want to shoot either a movie. A, like a short series of like just street racing like hood street racing not like fast and furious bullshit like actual like street i think we you talked about this that. right yeah yeah like just actually but like a drama around it you uh-huh. know what i'm saying just because i feel like if you would have taken like something like fast and furious 2 right and maybe watered it down to like less of the um police and law politics and all that shit and just made it about the cars and the racing and made that into a show That'd be fire. That sounds so very I, interesting. I can't print. That's one thing that I always, always, bro. And I have a script, like from like literally when I was like uh, thirteen, bro. Mm-hmm. It's on my my computer, some my old computer 
that mm. my girl has, bro. I gotta get that shit back. Bro. <laughs> you know, that shit. You, you, gotta, you gotta recover yeah, that, bro. Because it's, it's, it was. The yeah. old script's crazy. Like, I mean, you've written so much. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. feel like I it's haven't. It's trashed. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but you know, I like that. That's one yeah. thing I wish I was a little like, better at is writing and stuff like that. Uh, I don't think I've written like a, much personally. Have you written anything like that you like envision and you're like, this would be cool, like for that purpose, like you yeah, want to get well, this done? Never for anything that would be like production, like film or, or photo or mm-hmm. whatever. But I mean, mm-hmm. I, I was a creative writing major at Nassau. So I did, oh, facts. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, most yeah, yeah. Of the, uh, the main thing that I used to do was writing poetry and stories and stuff like that. So, mm-hmm. yeah. The short story game is wicked, man. That's something I, I wish I, I, I like I did more. Like short stories. I just I had to talk myself out of it because I was like, who reads short stories anymore? Even I mean, maybe if you could like boil one down into a TikTok, you might hit it. <laughs> like, nah, that's true. <laughs> I, I think you know where it has like a, a really strong community for that type of shit. Mm-hmm. Reddit. Reddit. Oh, really? Yeah, 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 yeah. Reddit. that's smart. I didn't but, even think of that. But they 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 tend to go a, a different direction with it. Oh yeah, real fan type. Of, oh my god, <laughs> fan bro. activity. Like, very... Fan fiction. Yeah. Yo. Oh, <laughs> like Fast and Furious <laughs> fan fiction. Like, bro. <laughs> The way that they be doing that shit, it's like... Should be in depth, too. Yeah, I'm like, yo, people... You know what I mean? I, everybody's into what they into, but I'm like, yo, how does how do you sit there and read this shit, bro? Like, <laughs> yeah. the, the grammatical errors? Like, nah, yeah. I'm, I'm weak. Yo, Not the grammar, How bro. would y'all felt if there was fan fiction about you? I'd be really upset <laughs> about that. <laughs> Depends how wait, 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 I have a question. You. Are we talking about, like, innocent fan fiction? Are you talking about the wicked shit? <laughs> Erotica? You're, you're, <laughs> like, the thing, the, you put that shit to the air. I feel like it's not happen, bro. Wait, I was like, because if it was innocent, I'd be like, all right, that's cool or whatever. But the way that you asked it, it seemed like all of us bro, was on a different writing, time from you, bro. Nah, bro. What do you mean? <laughs> Everyone was on the... We knew what was being talked about. Oh, my God. I Because who's writing... Innocent fan fiction, bro. I don't know. I'm I, not cause, bro, because you know what it is? I'll be looking up, like, One Piece theories, right? And sometimes they, like, give, like, a detailed description of, like, how it could, like, go down. You know what I'm saying? Like, does that make sense? Mm. Oh, that kind of reminds same, me of that. Same thing, yo. That Marvel show that's, uh... What if? What, what, if? what that's if? That's basically... But that's basically what it is. Like, I'll be looking for, like, a theory, mm. and then I'll end up at someone, like, talking about, oh, well, this is how it would play out or some shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So that's kind of like the, Wait, the so route that I... Wait, so why do you even look up theories, though, like, in the first place? Because I'm trying to see, like, where the show is going and, like, basically, like, things that occurred in the past can foreshadow a lot of things in the future. In specific for, for One Piece, you know mm, what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And also, like, I have um the One Piece chat, so they yeah. be, like, exchanging mad different theories and shit like that. So mm. This is, like, something fun to do. Cause yeah, I'm like, why just, not just watch it? You know, like me personally, like, <laughs> I'm so I if I'm watching say. a show, I'd rather just wait instead of like reading what's going to happen or like thinking it's about just, what might You know happen. what it is? It's fun to kind of think about what you think is going to happen and then see how it actually comes out. You I, know what I'm I agree with that. Cause I like, I don't do it often, but like sometimes if I have a really strong ass theory, especially if it's like for something that's current, mm-hmm. I'll just look it up mm. just to see, yo, this motherfucker got AIDS. You know what I mean? This as a random, this is a random. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, you know what I mean? Just, just to see, like, I'm the type of person that, like, if I think something's gonna happen, I like to kind of like, when it happens, it's just like, I told you. Yeah, you want, <laughs> you want that gratification? Uh, it's just like I'm yeah. like, I don't know. I'm not gonna put it in people's faces, but it's just like, just remember, yeah, just, just remember just, type just, shit. Just know, just know. Yeah. I, I knew. Just know that I know. You know what I mean? You're like the oracle. The oracle. Yo. Speaking of the oracle. Yo, bro, I've been telling everybody, bro. I think I told you that day that we're in a fucking simulation, right? Was yeah. I talking about that? I was. No. I've been just chopping it up about this. There's too many coincidences going yeah, on, he's, bro. He's heavy on this this yeah, simulation yeah, yeah, theory. Bro. Why do you use the word simulation? That's a good question. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I actually if I actually boiled it. Well, because like it just seems like um, what else would we call it? You know, like it's if it's not reality if it's like um be, being controlled yeah yeah i don't know in the confines of a system or something like that right i guess sure. i could i could see like that. there might be a better word for it i wouldn't i'm not sure i mean yeah. simulation theory is something that gets talked that's about an actual right yeah exactly yeah. like what's his face elon talks about, yeah elon musk talks about it i remember uh i think it's like one of the the uh 
I think the president of uh, Bank of America has like hinted at it before. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, really? yeah, yeah, yeah. Him? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like, yeah. That's wicked. It was weird. And like, mm. why? Like, out of all the people in the world. Yo, like, I, yeah. I do buy into the theory kind of for the most part. Like, I just, um, I guess if we're going to go here, like, I. I think that they just use the word simulation, which is like the only issue that I have is just the, the phrasing, because I, I understand the core components of what people are trying to say, but I just think that they're ultimately just referencing like Matrix. religious stories or like biblical stories. Like they, I, I do believe maybe you do too that like something created us, you know, I don't mm-hmm. know exactly what. And I, mm-hmm. If I did, I wouldn't tell you here. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I, I think there is pr- probably more than this, mm-hmm. but I don't, I don't really think it's like simulated. I think it's, um, it's re- it feels real to us until I know otherwise. Yeah. So we, I think that kind of, uh, we got to get like a working definition. What is a simulation? What would you consider so, to be well, simulation? Well, isn't a simulation like almost like a mimic of something else? Yeah. Simulating something else. Like, right. It's like, a, like I mean? a microcosm yeah. of a real event that's happening within another, uh, yeah. within a life. Within yeah. another life, right. I mean, that, I like, w- somebody within a simulation doesn't think it's a simulation. Mm-hmm. How, do, how do we True. get here? <laughs> <laughs> nah, but that's, a, that's one on it though. Like, yeah. if you're in, if you're in it, you don't think it's. Yeah. That's true. Good yeah. you know what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, um, you guys seen Guy? It's no. like a. It's like a. It just came out like last year. It's like a no. comedy. This was Ryan Reynolds, and it's basically. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. He's yeah, like yeah, yeah. A, he's he's like, um, a dude in a game, literally just a game, and he becomes aware that he's in a game, mm. and like, it's it's it's, it's like uh. He starts talking with like the the actual programmers and stuff like that. Like they wow. realize he he's not being an NPC anymore, right? Shit like that. That's kind of like um, Black Mirror, like the the Bandersnatch joint. Did you did you ever um, do the interactive one? Yeah, mm-hmm. that's kind of exactly what happened because, all right, I'm a spoiler alert, right? Depending on which um, choices you make in Bandersnatch, uh, you end up actually talking to uh, the character, and he ends up talking to you back, and like you can decide how the story is going to go. And I remember I chose one choice and it literally displayed the Netflix logo on the TV that he was watching. Yeah. And that's how he started to realize that mm-hmm. he was in like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, meta. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then shit just went crazy after that. Like there was like demons. It was crazy. Mm. But yeah, Black yeah. Mirror was, is different though. Like I remember they had an episode about like, um, you, you they were like recording their memories in their eyes oh, and then i the first, yeah. I, second I see i think, I think so. i've seen a, a, a commercial of some like they're actually trying to do that like yeah. it's like some sort of thing where you can like google glass kind of right but yeah. like now it's but like it's in, in your, your eye, eye. <laughs> like yo bro but i think that a lot of this shit is like early exposure i'm one of those kind of people sure. i think that you know what i mean but i, I was having this conversation with, with somebody and I was like, I can't tell exactly what it is. Like, you look at stuff like flying cars and, and like, movies of the past and things mm. of that nature. It's like, are these things happening already? Because, nah, are these things oh. happening because that's what was going to happen? Or are they happening because somebody had the idea and put it into something mm. and then it ended up happening? It's like, is it like a self-fulfilling prophecy or, right. you know what I'm yeah. saying? I don't know. Well, you know Rod Serling that did Twilight Zone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. think I think he said about sci-fi. It's like when they write sci-fi stuff back then, or when people do it today. It's not like they're just totally guessing at what might happen. It's like they're just extrapolating from with this point with technology or with mm-hmm. this aspect of life today. Like where might it end up in fifty years? So, mm-hmm. you know, using current background information. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, yeah I, I do think they are kind of forecasting like technological futures in that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Forecasting. To, I mean, but I don't know because I remember you saying that. But this was like a while ago. Somebody was saying something like things that were like, for example, let's just say the Internet, right? Like when did the Internet really like start? Take off? Yeah, yeah. Like, like late 90s? Late 90s. So like they like the idea that I don't want to say like the government, I don't know what body would have it, but like <laughs> they would already they already had that shit like way yeah. before it. They, they were working on the Internet yeah. since like the 60s. Yeah. But like figured out though, you know, like okay. Tesla, Nikola Tesla had like an idea for like what we would kind of call Wi-Fi. He had that back in like the 1800s. But, a, but a the way thing, of like harnessing energies, like in suspended mm-hmm. in air. I actually had a, a argument with my brother once, 
and he kind of broke it down. Technology, like this is technology. This is a yeah. product of technology, but this isn't actually technology. Technology is the plan. The plan. The plan itself is to technology. This is the mm. product of it. Okay. So technically, they had the technology for this shit. Uh-huh. Like the technology that motherfuckers have. Like, the products that we have of technology are yeah. just, yeah. you know what I mean, a drop in the bucket as to what's being planned. Yeah. The schematics of it, if the schematics of the internet have been around since the 60s, we've had technology for the 60s, um, for the internet since the 60s. You know yeah. what's crazy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Da Vinci deadass had schematics for planes and helicopters, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which yeah. is really yeah. wicked to think about, bro. Like, he had, yeah. like, it wasn't even, like, a drawing. Like, if you actually look at the documents... They're dead ass blueprints. Yeah, bro. The little gliding looking yeah, shit. Yeah, bro. bro. And it looks wow. Yeah, and it, you know what's crazy? These days, I think they're called paragliders. paragliders. Like we dead ass have them. That was, yeah. a, that and was it looks exactly the same, bro. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, it, it's it almost kind of makes you think like, what the fuck were we doing for like the the, the three hundred years in between him coming up with that and then us actually getting to it? You know what I mean? Like, well, I feel like we're more connected now. We're more easily connected to people to be able to create. And I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about like in like 1900s. Well, what, that, but I'm getting there. What I'm saying is What's now, like, I could I could exchange ideas with someone across the world just through my phone instantly. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It took us a while to kind of get there. Like once the Telegram came out and you could send like messages like all over the place, that's when I feel like things really started to like pick up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because that's now fair, fair. because now it became easier for you to diffuse information and exchange ideas with people all over the world. Because think about it this way, before that, you were only constrained to the ideas and technology that you had within your immediate circle. You know, as far as you could walk or as far as you could ride, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. you couldn't really take things from across the world. Yes, you could. You know what I'm saying? You took boats. Yeah, but it wasn't as quick. Yeah, but so my that's thing why is 300 years is a long ass time. But think that's about a but think long about motherfucking time, how long, bro. How long think about it this way though. How long does it take to sail from let's say California to Japan? A couple right? days. You think what? so to sail? To no sail? Way. To like, sail. Like it's a couple months, man. Yeah, bro. Oh yeah, yeah at Googling least. It. I'm googling it. Maybe a year. Google. To yeah, bro. sail, to that, sail yeah, on a dude. ship, and so you got to think about. Are you talking you about gotta, actual sailing, or if you had like a like a steam powered boat, or like a boat with an engine? See, I mean, I, I guess I'm thinking about a boat with an engine. That's different. Okay. A mm. sailboat would probably take a lot longer. Yeah. Mm. But I mean, even still, if it takes a year, like Da Vinci was a was an established thinker. Sure. Like there was schools of thoughts that traveled from different places. Like I forget what it was. Like the Enlightenment period or whatever the mm-hmm. case is. That was a traveling of, like, I guess, concepts from Europe towards different places. Like, yeah. countries in Europe to other places. And then also making its way over to, like, I guess, Asia at, at later points or, or whatever the case is. But, point being, shit traveled. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but they did, I, I think the biggest difference in that 300-year span is the Industrial Revolution. Because, like, even as far back as Da Vinci, they had the plans, but they didn't have the means to actually manufacture them. That is you also got to think about the transport of technology, too, because what we might have had here might not have been what people had over in, let's say, India, for example. Mm. Or, you know what I'm saying? So you got to transport that. And I just looked it up. It takes two months if you're traveling at, um, like, five knots or whatever, which I don't even know <laughs> what knots are, mm. right? It takes yeah. two months to get from California to Japan, right? So that's one way. Then you got to spend your time over there. You got to get resources. You got to bring them back, right? And then now, what if you have to go back, right? Get more I mean, stuff. You, you see what I'm the, saying? You could get the schematics. That's yeah, what but, I'm, but I'm talking about actual technology now, too. But, I mean, that's you know the technology. No, the schematics, schematics is the technology. I'm talking, okay, so I'm talking about physical resources to make something like this. You don't, you have, you don't think you have, like, we all have resources. Wouldn't but, you say? but why do you think we get oil from, let's say, Russia? You know what I'm saying? Because we don't immediately have it here. That's just an example. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying you're wrong, and I definitely Bro, hear what you're saying. nobody's wrong. We're just yeah. talking. You know what of I mean? Of course. Like, like but I, yeah. I guess, in my mind, the way I'm looking at it is, like, Comparing it to now, we can see how quick somebody can have an idea and then it gets done. Mm-hmm. Like, it took the motherfuckers like <laughs> centuries to do things that were already in the works. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's like, you know what I mean? Bonkers to me. Like, what the fuck was, like, how was things situated at that time? Like, that you can't, like, you know what I mean? I, I guess, like, one way we could look at it is, like, let's just say we learned that shit in, in film class was, like, the idea that the uh, the Lumiere brothers created 
with cameras mm -hmm. in order to get um like i guess they were just using 24 pictures in order to create some type of smooth motion or whatever the case is mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. between the time that they got it and then what's his face what's stealing motherfuckers name in america you said Steve. edison fucking thief <laughs> fucking thief yeah. horrible yeah. but like edison took the idea and kind of had people under him perfected yeah within a span of like 20 20 years or so mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying that's like, my fault no nah, i'm done i'm done that to me that's the snowball effect at that point technology is really just a snowball effect because look at the youtube you know what i'm saying it took us what four years to get like a thousand subs some shit like that and then once we got a thousand it took us three months to get to 10k Cause that's what you, you know what I'm saying? fucking spinning in the wind. <laughs> like, you know yeah, but saying? so were they. But then once we developed the groundwork, then it was easier. Okay, you know that's what, what you're saying. saying. That makes it, that's a good point. Yeah, but I definitely, I definitely see what you're saying too. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you know what? I didn't look at technology as the schematics before, but I definitely see what you're saying. It's right, interesting right, right. You brought that mm -hmm. to light. You know what really scares me about technological advancement too is like you, you don't know if uh, they've been working for hundred, these hundreds of years getting us to this point. But like at, at any points where they, you know, they were so focused on like, can we do it? But like, do they ever ask themselves, should we? Should do we? It? Yeah. As yeah. ethics, though, I yeah. think ethics, ethics and are science, out the window these days. I think. Yeah. yeah. I feel like ethics and science are like a, they're like dueling heads. Yeah. Mm. Because like, let's just say, like, should we bring back the woolly mammoth? You know, it's like I know they're trying to, but did I, has any ever been like? You know, Done. Do we Should want we? this back? Well, no, yeah, I mean, well, they're cloning sheep and shit like right. on the regular. Now. There's a really interesting movie about that called Jurassic Park. You know <laughs> I mean, nah, like, but you know, like breeding light is is one way. How do how do y'all feel about that? I'm What's sorry, we're breeding. No, bringing life, oh. artificial life. Oh yeah, like a, like an artificial like cloning stuff. Cloning. Oh. You know what I'm saying? I think that's God's work. I don't think people should. People should do that. Didn't, yeah. we can't, we didn't can't they just that. Uh, recently like fully did like some sort of like plasma or like there was like a full strain that was just discovered or like um, a full like DNA. I forget what it was like a human DNA like fully. I don't know. It sounded like something that would have been done already, but it mm. just like was done recently. Oh wow. Yeah, I'm not really nah, sure. I didn't, I didn't hear about anything like that. What about this? Uh, the 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 water card. You guys hear about that? The water card. I feel like that's been talked about for a long time, though. Yeah. It's like amphibious or just water? Because that's a boat, then, right? Yeah. Well, no, no, no. <laughs> I think no, no. I think it could. Like it's powered I by water. I, no, you I saying? think like it could submerge too, though. Yeah. Oh, oh those have been. Yeah, the military's had stuff. Yeah, like amphibious yeah. vehicles that can mm -hmm. go in a land. Wait, water. they can go on, underwater too, though. No, no. Only Is that what you're saying? Well, that's like, what I'm saying. Some, yeah. Some, oh, really? Yeah. So oh, they yeah, can yeah. travel on top and. Right. Well, any car can make it underwater. He's not gonna make it out. Bro, that's some GTA shit. GTA, like, I'm like bro. GTA totally. They probably wouldn't. got some shit like that, though. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Bro. yeah. Like, who, who is they, though? Shit. Oh, my God. <laughs> wait, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Um, wait, wait nah. hold on. Yeah. Y'all believe in aliens? Yeah. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even the government. I feel like the government. Bro, even. didn't they just confirm that shit, like, a month ago or some shit like that? I think sometime during the pandemic, if I'm not mistaken. Bro, like, w could you imagine if they confirmed this shit, like, in the in the 90s or something like that? You know, like, I feel like things would have been recept like received way differently. Yeah, bro. Like, How? Because I feel people like... People freaked out more? Yeah, I feel like people are so desensitized to stuff in general, to just things being possible, mm -hmm. that, like... Saying that from like something as like the government is like, all right, but you know, back when shit was just like you had a like, I don't know, shit was always there was always shit going on, of course. I but, feel like the 90s, maybe not though, it would have been different, like 80s, like, 70s. I'll say like 50s, okay, be or like 60s because like I think that the shift really happened with kind of like what you're describing after like Watergate happened. And the American mm. people kind of it was the yeah. first time that American people knew on a like a, on a on a gross scale, oh, our government isn't telling us everything. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like that's when the the tr the trust started to separate. Like yeah, like there was a whole cultural shift. Like I mean, I see, you could, you couldn't even saying. curse on TV at yeah. the time. Now you fucking cursing. You showing yeah. fucking you know what I mean nudity. Yeah. Like mm. music is readily telling you to take drugs. Like there's a yeah. cultural revolution that happened in the '60s, and that was a that was not the only part, but that was a huge part of it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That was a huge turn. Yeah. Huge turn, bro. Do you think that was a positive turn? Um, yeah, I think so, because we were idealistic before. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah. You gotta think about it. Like shit was kind of like you look at um, 
like the TV and stuff from that period of time, it's very clean, mm -hmm. family oriented, this, that, and the third. But that was certain people's realities. But if yeah. you go a couple of blocks, you're seeing yeah. poverty. Yeah. yeah, you're seeing like, you know, what I mean, children like like running the streets and shit like that, and, and people being you know mistreated by like yeah. you know these government officials and shit like that or police mm -hmm. officers. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It was kind of like a, a false a falsehood that they were portraying on on a, on a, on a grander scale, and then war happened, mm -hmm. and they televised war, which was like, could you imagine? That shit is crazy to me. That You're putting this shit on air. Yeah. What the fuck? Whose idea was that, bro? Even even now, like today, that shit would still be out of pocket to me. Well, you know, there's stories, actually. Of, like, the first uh, battle in the Civil War, people didn't really know what to make of it. They weren't sure, like, how legitimate it was. So, like, people, like, brought their families to, like, the picnic and, like, watched the war. Are you wow. fucking serious? Yeah, I don't know if that's, I like... I didn't know about that. Yeah, I don't know if that's true history or... If, uh, <laughs> yeah. Something that might, but that's... Exactly. I remember I've heard, I read that in a history textbook. Bro, that's oh, wow. crazy. Yeah. Uh, that's... Uh, it's just, just crazy to think how much like we've changed. Yeah. Yo, I wonder what they're putting in the history textbooks right now. Kanye and yeah. Trump meeting, bro. Yeah, right. Like, the, that was like that's in crazy. A, oh, for real? Wait, what? It was in a, it's in a textbook. I don't know what textbook. Like what grade and stuff? I don't know where it exact. Oh, that's fucking wild, bro. Just to kind of just think, yo, think about how disjointed history being taught in America is. Like, yeah, like what? <laughs> Why though? Like, where, where do you gather information? For, what it's like, what learn? do you benefit from? Yeah, that? what do you yeah, learn? Man. I what, feel from, like from Kanye history, and Trump? like oh. yeah, that in general. You know what I'm saying? I, it's a, I guess it's a momentous. Event. I feel like <laughs> even like <laughs> 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 like all right. Let's say like when we were you know in school, like the history books, um, they had stuff like it's just I'm just dwelling on the fact like what do you learn from that right? Did, were there stuff in our books that like yeah, were there was no, all total waste yeah. so, I mean so, our, our education system is meant to just feed us stuff that's just you know kind of keep our minds mildly entertained but not really like turn us into thinkers yeah there's like an, a Rockefeller mm -hmm. quote about that it was like the educate because the Rockefeller family back in like the early 1900s I think more or less like crafted our education system as it is today to be workers yeah and they they like modeled a lot of the systems in schools after like factories like yeah. the, mm -hmm. grouping people by age and like the bell to like dismiss yeah. classes and stuff so, yeah. yeah I mean like, like a I'm, shift I'm sure it's gotten worse today with people that are going through the education system today but just i graduated high school in 2015 and i was pretty aware of it then i was like none of this stuff is really helping anybody yeah, yeah. it's, it's not meant to help you yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i mean but you know there, there are schools out there though that are like privately like are just creating their own curriculum or if you're like in a school yeah private schools can to an extent i think to, to an extent but yeah. like i think where you can control everything though i don't know i think um i went to public school What's the name? Ariel. She works. You you remember Ariel, right? She used to come to the BTBs. Yes. Oh, she, word. she actually works in the school. She was telling me about it. Where it's very different. It's actually um, smaller classes, but it engages and encourages more group effort to solve a problem. So it's mm -hmm. actually from the way that she kind of explained it to me. I still don't understand it. And there was like a specific <laughs> word for it, mm -hmm. but it's literally meant to teach children how to take on specific roles with their strengths and come together to work together to solve a specific problem and i find that really interesting because it's a sharp difference from what the public school system is bro because when you really think about it you're teaching people that they're not allowed to talk to each other in school mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying and it's like to me that's like that's crazy when you really just you're 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 trying to punish someone for having a conversation yeah that's just fucking wild to me Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know how damaging that could be to people? I mean, but you you yeah. have, you just, I guess, more so like the time. There's a time for everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, I mean, I don't think that's wrong per se, though. Like, not talking in class. But it's just, like, breeding this atmosphere where it's like you're not, like, free to communicate. Like, yeah. you know, not a cooperative. Uh, because... I agree with you. There's a, a time and place for it, but mm. I don't remember there was ever a time in class where I was able to like have a conversation and not that's get yeah, but yeah, class, class, yeah, yeah your class exam really wasn't really for it. I guess I guess like when you, you being between classes, 
you had gym. Gym was social. Lunch was social. Right. You know what I mean? I guess you're being taught to only communicate when they allow you. When to. they allow <laughs> yeah, you. To. Right. It's like <laughs> you get here. Get that's just one example of like all of the oppression in the school. It's like that all of the things that they they put on us. It's like you just get mm-hmm. used to all this oppression because it's gonna be this way in the workplaces and all that stuff too. Mm. But to play devil's advocate, I mean, don't don't you think that like encourages focus though? No. Why not? Because I wasn't focused when I was just sitting, like, uh, my mind was just, mm-hmm. it's probably why I'm an artist, because, like, every time I'd be in a math class, I'd just be drawing. It was, like, always, like, free drawing time, because that stuff was so boring yeah. to me. But, I, I mean, would... you, you focus on something, though. You can't, I don't think you could have That's... a conversation with Alejandro oh, and then right. paint a masterpiece. I thought you were talking about, like, school teaches focus. Oh, I mean, I guess just not really communicating when you're supposed to be doing something. You're supposed to be doing schoolwork, but mm-hmm. I guess you're doing your work. But right. I mean, even doing your work, you have to be focused in order to do that, wouldn't you say? Sure. Yeah, I see your point. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I think mm-hmm. you know, focus, you've got you to find it on the inside. Well, I mean, if you fi- if you have actual interest and passion in something, then you're... Is I feel like you're naturally going to focus on something like that and fixate on it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I school at least for a long time for me didn't provide that atmosphere for me to focus on what I wanted to do it actually kind of to to be honest it deterred my focus because I wanted to focus on fashion I wanted to focus on my art classes but I couldn't because I had to worry about a 10 page English essay about a book that I didn't give a shit about Mm. just to be able to apply for college yeah you know what I'm saying (laughs) and Look where that went. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, College dropout, baby. <laughs> but but I definitely see what you're saying, and I, I agree with you. In mm. in some way, it could um, establish focus, but I think most of all, it establishes a time and place. Yeah. Like, it teaches that kind of um, uh, subject or whatever you want to call it. But I also feel like there's another side where it deters people who are actually driven and passionate about what they're passionate about, you know? I remember I, I tried to concentrate on my focus too, and um, there I was so I was signing up for BOCES for fashion design, mm-hmm. right? And they told me, oh, we don't we don't supply that. We're not sending you to BOCES for fashion design. You got to do all these math credits or whatever. I hated math. I'm like, facts. What Shit. the fuck are y'all teaching me? You know what I'm saying? It's not practical. It's not yeah. practical. If they yeah. should, if they, bro, math should have just been tax shit related, bro. Like, yeah, imagine bro, they would have done that. Like, how to do that shit, bro? Yeah. And I'm, like, I'm 24 years old, bro. I, I actually think that, like, I was always the worst math student. It, was, it bored me endlessly. Yeah. And I just could never wrap my head around like the why am I doing this? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But bro. after I like got out of school, I actually started like researching just in, like independently because I was interested. Like. And like why were we learning that and like actually making the connections like the historical relevance of it like why are we learning it? like they would teach you like the fibonacci um that's like, very or, like pythagorean yeah, pythagorean what's... stuff that was like, the, the a yeah a plus b. but they would never actually like it tell you like why, why these problems should, arise yeah. like i think if they connected that stuff people like me because i was always yeah. Into, like, like history and, yeah i would be like, okay i actually get this instead yeah. it was just like here's like paper um with yeah. numbers on it like just figure right. this out yeah. within this vacuum show your work context yeah. not context is a uh that's a that's something that i feel like definitely would help yeah. like kind mm-hmm. of give you an idea Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I can't front though. I didn't fuck with school, but in hindsight, bro, when I was able to do something, I felt like a strong sense of accomplishment. And I'm like, that's some shit that like, when something's kind of like difficult for me, you know, like to just wrap my head around, like if it's something that I'm passionate about, I'll, I, I guess the same, you know what I mean? Uh, synapses in the brain fires and I kind of get into that zone, like. I was another. I was shit at math. I was trash at math, bro. Like I passed fucking my integrated algebra regions for the sixty-eight, and it was beautiful. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, you passed. You know what I mean? But like, when I was able to, despite the the environment, because the environment plays a huge part in, I guess, your ability to do things. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. If, when I was able to get past the environment, when I did understand like geometry, when geometry clicked, something. It's, it's a. I don't know. It's a good feeling. It's, yeah. mm-hmm. it's like, I think it's, it's something of like a confidence booster because like, at least I know if I'm tasked with something, I have the wear it though in order to do it. Right. Mm-hmm. That's something that I value. Like, or I think everybody should value. Like when it comes down to it, if I'm, if I need to do this, I can do it. Yeah. Even if it may not be with math, it may not be with science, it may not be with all of these like specific things, but just like, I guess life problems in general, I want to know that I'm well equipped enough to just handle some shit that's given to me. Even if it's not like super AP, like this motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Just be able to get through it, you know what I mean? 
we all can't be Daniel. You know what Facts. I mean? Um, we... That's a fact. <laughs> nah, but like, I feel like you could also get that from like just doing other stuff, though. You know, like like what though? Like, I don't know. I like doing a lot of like hands-on stuff too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like, yeah. Yeah. if I'm like for me like thinking of something and then not really knowing how to do it, mm-hmm. but know that I, I like I want it in a certain way, and then yeah. figuring that in between. Right. For me, once I get it done, then I'm like, yo, even if it's not the best way to do it, yeah, I did. At myself. least I did it. Yeah, yeah that's like that's where I find accomplishment. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I are think you, that's the same that's the same principle. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. So if yeah, you tackling yeah. something hands on like that, are you the type that just kind of goes in blind, or do you like research it a lot before? It depends. It depends. I, yeah, research does help yeah. for sure. But like, if it's like um something that I feel like wouldn't have too much consequence if I yeah, didn't, right? like, then right. I'll just do it. Imagine you know? if you're just car, building a Lego kind of set. Exactly. Yeah, like, yeah, I yeah. probably wouldn't do something on my car because then that's, like, very... Yeah, you get, you, you suffer could get, consequences. Yeah, yeah, but if it's, like, stuff, like, you know, around the house, backyard, whatever the case is. Cooking. Like, that cooking. Way, yeah, the way you know. bro said, research helps. <laughs> 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 the level of fucks for research yeah, yeah, is yeah. right here. Bro, like, everything in here, I don't... Obviously... I'm not like a builder or nothing like that, but like I don't research how to do anything, you know, like this right here, like, yeah. and these are mm-hmm. simple things, but like you, you still get those small like things of like yo, I did that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. yeah. Even if you're like making a dresser, you know, bro, everyone throw nobody reads instructions when you buy a new piece of furniture. Nah, you I know don't. that I, because I you read instructions, bro. It depends. It depends. It depends. it depends. it depends. It depends. I do. It depends. If it's included, <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. Sure. You actually you ah, read it? Yeah, you don't yeah. like try to like yo, like, I'm, I, I could do this. No, because I used to be that way, and then I would always just get so like hung up on stuff. Oh this yeah, time, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like okay. try to give it a go before I like. Yeah. You know what I mean, go to the instruction, or if I could find a video, I'm a video. Oh guy. yeah, I'm nah, same like, facts. Oh yeah, yeah. Video, yeah visual yeah, yeah. learner. Fucking yeah. uh, nah, just I'm illiterate. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> like, that's a question I want to ask you guys. Actually, how often do y'all read? That's crazy. Because I was gonna say like, is anyone reading anything right now? Uh, I don't actually read that much. <laughs> Like, as recently, like, last summer, I was like, yo, nah. Because I know it's good practice, like, I think you should be reading every day. I, like, aside from, like, your phone, you know, like, actually reading something that might take you, like, whether it's a story or if it's, like, uh, you know, just knowledge in terms of, like, anything, you know what I'm saying? Like, history or not, whatever, fiction, nonfiction, like, I, I mean, I don't do it as much. I haven't really picked up, it's probably been, like, a month or two. Since you read something, mm-hmm. like you picked up a book and read. Yeah. What about y'all? I read pretty much every day. I try to. Mm. Oh, I fuck with that. I fuck with that. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. I feel like for me, it's a, it's a thing of discipline. Yeah. Like I, mm-hmm. I feel like, I have discipline when it comes to reading. It's like, it's mostly a time thing too. It's a discipline and time. Like if I could discipline myself to like read at this time, yeah. Then I could do it, but like if I just like I don't ever really have a natural urge to read. Me neither, That's my neither. like me personally. The, you, you well, like so like I had I like I said I was coming from like creative writing, so I always felt that I had to read in order to like actually write. Yeah. And then when I started focusing on tattooing, I kind of stopped reading altogether because I was like I've just looked at like art books and just mm-hmm. picture books. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. Kind of forgot how to read for a little bit there. Now I like it because I find that it helps me like unwind and okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. you know I won't read like uh, crazy complicated stuff. I'll just yeah. try to read stuff that just yeah like, not blue light in my face. Facts, and, yeah. no, that's like good. what would you say? Like what do you read? A lot of poetry books. Like, oh, cool. Cool. okay. Uh, cool. E.E. Cummings book now. Just nice. Compilations. Mm-hmm. And, what about nice. you? You reading? What do you define as reading? <laughs> like, like not literature. manga. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Then it's been um probably like a year. <laughs> Or something like that yeah. I'm being honest though yeah 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 I'm gonna be honest cause the thing with me I was just having this conversation literally today bro mm-hmm. that um that's what I'm saying bro. I'm more of like an audio or visual person um and like my anxiety like be acting up cause I be thinking about shit that I have to do after I read you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying and yeah. it's like I'll find myself like I'll read like a couple of pages and then I'll zone out Get on distracted. other things yeah that I have to do you know what I'm saying? And yeah. then it's like, damn, I got to go back and reread this paragraph because Facts. I kind of skimmed. <laughs> and then I do it. And then another couple of pages. And then I got to do that shit again. And that shit, I'll yeah. be honest, like, that's something that I'm trying to work on. But it really yeah. is very frustrating. Um, I feel you and it's, on that. it's disheartening. I'll be honest. Like, that yeah. shit just be, like, getting me because it's like my body is telling me, like, yo, like, 
you sitting down, you relaxing, but mm-hmm. you can't be. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah. Um, like for, I had that problem too. And for a while, I would really just read what they call it, you know, like self help books or things that would just like offer you advice because mm-hmm. you don't have to like put together a whole narrative. You could just read like 10 pages and just internalize that. And if you have to put the book down, like it's still with you. And yeah, that's true. That's true. And that's a, that's a good workaround. I think like what he was saying about like discipline, like, um, yeah, like, this is a separate question, but like, are y'all disciplined? You know what I mean? I'm personally, I feel like I'm disciplined. Um, I want to say where it matters because mm-hmm. I think that you know, I mean, there are places where it does matter that I'm I'm not super disciplined on, but I can get away with for the time being. But I see. Um, like reading, it's 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 one of those things where, like, I don't read because I just can listen to it easier and do it while I'm doing something else or whatever Mm -hmm. the case is. Like, I like audiobooks. I like listening to audiobooks. That's Mm -hmm. something that I do a lot. I have, like, an Audible subscription that I haven't bought anything with in in quite some time. I probably (laughs) should preface with. But, you know, um, I get in stages. Even then, I get in stages when I just want to, like, all right, let me listen to this. Let me me knock this down. Let me try to figure this out or whatever the case is. Let me try to implement it. And, like, I'm a note taker. Like, notes are, like, really important to me. Like, mm-hmm. if I write some shit down, I'm way more inclined to just remember it. Mm-hmm. And then I'll be able to, like, recite it back a little bit more. And um, one thing I don't do often is, like, revisit notes, mm-hmm. which is probably not a good idea. Because, well, the fucking point of what, right? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? You well, did, I mean, you I like think there is still a point, though. Yeah, I think when, when you put your you. hand to it, yeah. Yeah, but I feel like, you know, reinforcement. Right. Okay. You, you get, yeah. you, you reinforce it. And, um, like... I, I think at least my point when I write down notes is to kind of just distill the most important parts of it, even if it's not in great detail, but just enough to maybe kind of make those connections in my brain. Like, oh, this was just refers to this, that. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, if I'm able to do that shit, I feel like maybe if I'm reading, like, I can highlight certain things and just jot it down. I think that that much, that much is a little bit more useful for me because I, I think, like, with often things, like... Just there's a lot of like fluff. There's a lot of excess yeah. in everything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a there's, there's a shit ton of excess, even in books. Like, even like I think that sometimes you'll read like a paragraph, and I'm like, you could have put this in one sentence. <laughs> yeah, you could have simplified this greatly. And I'm like, I'm somebody for me. I just like when something repeats too much. Obviously, repetition has a purpose, but when it repeats, it's like, all right, you just giving me bullshit now. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Give me you. Just give filler. me. Yeah, it's I'm filler. I'm not one for filler, bro. Yeah. Just tell me what I. Oops, Tell me what I need to know so I can move on. I think mm. we were just having, you and me were having that conversation like the other day too. About what? When we were on the phone that like, because the guy that um, you recommended me to watch for some YouTube videos. Yeah, video, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I was going to say, that, that sounds like YouTube videos right yeah, now. Yeah, bro. They, they just start, I'm like, I, I'm like. We were just talking about that. That's was crazy. I fast forward through that shit. Yeah. I put that shit on like 1.75 times speed or whatever because it's like, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't like the fluff. I know that oftentimes you people do it in order to like kind of make what they have to say seem like I guess have more scale. Yeah. But I think that, you know, just efficiency is is like key. Because mm-hmm. you only have people's attention really only for a certain amount of time unless you're talking to like a girl who's really into you or something <laughs> like you know what I'm saying, but everything you said is important, but you know. You got juice. Nah I don't. That's quite quite thirsty <laughs> over here. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Man. I find that my discipline comes and goes. I mean, I'm less, I'm more disciplined today than I was when I was a kid. And yeah. Stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, I think I've become more disciplined over life. I've made a conscious effort to, like, try to cut out things that distract me and, and break my discipline. Uh, a lot of, like, technology and stuff like that. How's that working for you? It comes and goes. I actually just, mm-hmm. like, I've lived without internet in my house for, like, the last couple months. I just got it back in because I found that it was just finally starting to, like, be a hindrance. But I was, like, when I got rid of it, I was, like, I'm really just using this stuff for, like, sc- streaming TV. And I was, like, I'm just trying to, like, be without it and just focus on myself and books and stuff like that. Um, but I've been there, like, where you're saying, where, like, efficiency is key. And, like, yeah, it's it, very important in work and stuff. But I think it's also important to just take time to, like, enjoy how long something takes in life like not worry about am i getting the most out of this in this amount of time like just you know take take a walk enjoy the you know stop and smell the flowers yeah time and place yeah that's a fact damn something that you said just clicked uh, oh yeah speaking <laughs> of the um because you said you were with that like you know being tech, like internet and all that stuff i briefly asked like during the session about like um using social media i feel like you 
or really anybody with any profession nowadays or like artistic stuff could like benefit a lot from that and you were kind of saying like it's not really your thing like uh you know the tiktok thing or doing reels and stuff like that yeah um and i guess really like for tattoos like they would have books and stuff like that like shops mm -hmm. but nowadays anything can really go off on the internet you know what i'm saying yeah. and i feel like the tattoo stuff is just something that has a huge audience and and interest in that i feel like i don't know it just could would you ever just even give it a shot like for like a month or, or doing two? like tiktoks and reels yeah something yeah you know what I'm saying? since we had that conversation earlier this week mm -hmm. i think uh i've been giving that thought like, yeah um I, what's the, this is the the main thing that is like that i think you were saying deters you just like what like the uh actual act of doing it no, taking that time I actually, like don't agree with it like i wish people could stop and like not just have to cap not yeah. have to capture somebody's focus with like six second clips like flashing lights and stuff yeah. like that mm -hmm. so you know like I, I know i'm not gonna like, be the one person that like takes people away from that but, like yeah. i also you know i'll like sit and try to make the decision of, like should i do something like that I'm, like i don't, I don't really yeah. know that i want to like give into it and, yeah i think it really works for you guys um like the content that you make like i love the um like the childhood shows the things that you've been doing lately that's it he's, he's Thank known for yeah that. but yeah. uh I don't know. I mean, it, it might sound a little um, like highfalutin and stuff, but like you, you do a tattoo on somebody for like five, six hours. I don't know if you want to just boil that down to like a, a two second feature. On I like see what reel. you're saying. Yeah. A hundred percent. But that also, it could be said about like if somebody does a, a TikTok about like a behind the scenes of a film that took months. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But sure. you still capture it because like, I, and then I feel like, I feel what you're saying too on the like, I don't know if I want to buy into it because like, I feel like if we would have gone on TikTok way before we are now, like we would have, because that was my mindset, like, yo, like, why am I going to, you know, like, this is unnecessary. Because, mm -hmm. like, I, I don't like being on my phone any more than I have to be. Yeah. But, like, nowadays, like, it's like you're, it's not even that, like, you have to, because I'm not, no one should, like, you shouldn't have, say, have to say that, but it's more like you're missing out on what could be if it's you don't sure yeah. yeah you know what i'm saying and so we talked about this too like uh i my head like when i so it's just for argument's sake like we're all content creators right on mm -hmm. social media aspect you guys like when you set out to make content i mean your your the whole plan is like you shoot the content right and then you had a plan for that shoot and then you produce it and then it's released so it's like every step of the way you're considering it as like content whereas like I do a tattoo. I'm not thinking that, like I'm just thinking about the design and the person and yeah. the experience like that. Yeah. And then like it comes to like take the photo of it. And I'm always kind of just like caught off guard by it, even though like I know I want to take a photo of it. Mm -hmm. uh, just simple things like having um, a sort of a streamlined look like on my page is something that I don't have because I don't like step people in front of like a you know a black curtain and like yeah. just get that nice look. I'm just you know I'm at the point where I do a tattoo. I don't want to like all, then you know I mean I know I should, but not to say that I don't want to. But I just, I just don't, I don't really yeah. know why. I'm just like, I focused all of the mental energy that I had on like doing the tattoo. Yeah. And it's like, all right, well, hopefully I get a good photo of it, you know? My, all right, so my question to you is, if you taking, I guess, the plunge and adding to the dumpster fire, that <laughs> is the, the short attention span mm -hmm. of society at this point in time, right? Mm -hmm. If doing that has the potential to put you in a in a better better place doing what you already love mm -hmm. maybe bringing you more people i'm assuming if you have more people you're able to charge more yeah Granted, that's not necessarily the mm -hmm. goal the goal yeah. but i mean i think with anything once you become better it should be reflected you know yeah. what i mean yeah. if like you said you don't really have the super clean you know background or whatever the case is but if like taking i don't know 15 seconds to record a short video mm -hmm. could be beneficial to that the part of it that you love do you do you still think it's not worth it no i i definitely know that it could benefit me if i like focus on it more i mm. just also want to i don't want to walk the line of like just being or focusing too much on like what the photo is going to be afterwards like because like i said when i'm focusing on doing the tattoo like i'm gonna just do the tattoo and not think about like taking the photo after and then like when it comes time um I just, uh, I don't know, I guess I kind of get, like, uh... Lazy? Maybe that, or... 
it's not even that. It's like sometimes I'll, I'll try to like get creative again and then I'll just make like questionable choices of like how I'll pose the person or like what is the backdrop. Then I'll look back at that like what the hell was I thinking? This, this whole shit is 0% art and 100% science. That's okay. Tell me more about that. Like this is not a, this is TikTok and, and social media. There's an art to it, sure, but it's not necessarily about being artistic it's really just about getting it done yeah it could look however you just put a song on it or whatever the case is cool boom like that could that could be the caveat that i'm not even about to really try to do it but i mean if i could just hold a phone 15 seconds or like six seconds fuck like like we said you know what i mean look at the tat put a hashtag on it all of that might take like another like let's just say grand total like another six minutes to do after you've already did this five hour tattoo so that's right. a five hours and six minutes mm-hmm. of i guess whatever it is that you've done right and you know what i mean imagine you just do that every time you're doing it it becomes a part of the practice you know mm-hmm. like i'm not gonna sit here and, and tell you oh yo bro your your fucking your profile is gonna go you know what i mean because i can't make promises mm-hmm. but now that we're dealing with science as opposed to Creativity, creativity is finicky. Science is is very, you know, what I mean, you do trackable. It, it's trackable. Yeah. So how long have you guys been making content under that like uh, opinion? I started doing that shit with TikTok. Well, I mean, I guess we started doing it with the reaction channel, and mm-hmm. then that's pretty much when everything started to go. Okay. Mm-hmm. I would spend. Did you have like a, a moment where you realized like I, I gotta stop like maybe seeing this as like creative work and yeah. just like, do the work? It, it took two years of fucking putting some shit out that nobody was watching. Yeah. That shit is demoralizing. Right. Yeah. That shit is demoralizing. I sat here and edited this yeah. shit for like three hours. Nobody gives a fuck. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. That shit fucks with your head. It's like, yo, am I really doing what the yeah, fuck I'm supposed to? I cared. To? I cared. I appreciate, <laughs> I appreciate that, not, man. Yeah. But I mean, my thing is like. If I can do this in service of fueling my artistic desires, I'll give the beast what it wants in order to get what I want from it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You just need the mm-hmm. the platform, if you will. Yeah, you know what I mean? That's profound. I guess also it depends on the goal. Like at least when it comes to us, obviously we are playing the game because our goal is to, like we mentioned, like like with anybody, you can start doing one thing, and then once you are you know, a little bit more established, you can actually go into what you want to do, focus on yep. what you want to focus yeah. right um it could be it's different for like when it comes to tattooing like if your goal isn't to like maybe you know reach a, a certain type of mass of people and you just are you know cool with like uh how it is then then there's really no point you know because some people you know they that's just like not their goal but like no, let's I say for that, example that's perfectly in line with that sorry to cut you off go ahead. no 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 i'm just i was just gonna wrap up and say like like for example somebody who might start all the way down from a print like everybody starts from print and they want to open up like their own tattoo shop doing mm-hmm. something like that might help nope, not definitely sure. yeah. definitely because you know yeah. yeah. right. then it's about you because then it's like your personal brand and then boom it's like your own tattoo that's it's already known because of you right you know what i'm saying but mm-hmm. what were you saying no, that, uh, that I think what what both of you are saying is like you have there's things um, that you have to do in order to like reach the next step. And they might not necessarily be like creative endeavors, but they might just be more, I guess, like business endeavors in order to like help you reach yeah. that yeah. next step. And that that's how like the social media is for me. I mean, I, I don't particularly enjoy being on social media. It's for mm. uh, sorry to say it. <laughs> it's just like, yeah. uh, you know, I know it's a, a necessary evil. I think yeah. it's kind of like what you were saying. I know that I, I, I ought to be on it and I should be on it. So I am. Mm-hmm. But it's just like I don't uh, I don't focus a lot of my time on like thinking about how I should plan my page and my content and stuff like that. I, I mean, guess the point that I'm making is you don't really have to. Yeah. It's a, it's a lot. It's it's a lot less planning, just a lot more. Just yeah. it's a lot more McDonald's than it's filet mignon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cause like, cause, uh, cause even to your point of like, you know, once you're done, you you might fixate on how you shoot it or, or what. But like, there's so many pages where like literally every well, at least when it comes to tattoos, you know, at least me, I'll see artists and like some might have a structure. I don't even know any t- off the top, but most w- people I see, it's like one post might be right on the table or one post might be just standing up, depending on the position. Like it doesn't really matter where it is, cause at the end of the day. I'm just looking at the tattoo. Mm-hmm. They might zoom in. They might not. They might move the camera. They might not. Yeah. But, and so there is no real structure on their feed. 
but what the one consistent is there's a tattoo at least you know yeah. what i'm saying yeah. people like to see that you're working yeah it's just a weird thing like instead of like actually coming and seeing that they just like to they yeah. like the image of oh he's working you yeah. know what i'm saying you, know you could saying? you could dead not be doing shit but you could kind of come off as you're working that's just the way <laughs> yeah. that it is but yeah. i mean to say your point you said it's a necessary evil clearly it's not because you don't do it <laughs> you know what i mean like like it mean it just like if it's not your thing, it's not your thing. But I just, I just. No, want I mean, you to, I, I do. What do you mean? I don't do it. Like you're saying, right? like you don't go out your way to mm-hmm. make, I guess, capturing every piece of work. You don't. Do you go out your way to document it? I don't know if yeah, you do. Yeah, you, I photograph everything that I do. Oh, okay, sometimes okay. Sometimes for my own records. Oh, you don't post them though. No, I post. I do post. Okay. I don't post yeah. probably as frequently as like I should. Uh, other, okay. People tell me I should. Fair, fair, mm-hmm. fair. Yeah. Fair. What would you say, like? um the goal though is then is it just to do you uh, have like a certain goal like just like you know what i'm saying if you're trying yeah, to, just to to reach more people or and okay to reach the type of people that uh would be getting the kind of work that, that you'd like to do, do. Yeah. I, that's what i was thinking of because i'm like i automatically go to like ink masters and shit like yeah. that yeah. like i think that i don't know what the prerequisites are for you to get onto a, a, a show <laughs> on, on i guess on national television like that but the one thing that you know what I mean? I would take a wild guess that you need is a reputation. Yeah. You know? Doesn't I, hurt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. At the very least. At the very at least. At the very least. Yeah. Yeah. I think that this is something that could just, you know, if you play the game right, that shit could, like, really help a reputation. Yeah. yeah. That's all, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not trying to convert you to, you know, no. a TikToker. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because yeah, I'm like, yeah. Yeah, people do what they do. Whatever works mm. for you is working for you. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, like... Um, whenever anybody tells me they don't want to, I'm like, yo, trust me. It, it's like, it's easier. It could be easier than it looks. It's, it's, uh, the point is, pause, like, not the point, but like the, the one caveat is, is, is you, you have to be consistent. Right. Mm-hmm. Consistency. That part beats is bro. You don't, you'll be days. You don't feel like doing shit. I don't want to fucking post this sh- fucking thing. I'm tired of doing this shit. Yeah. But it's just kind of like a boost. You got to give. Like, you got to give the beast what it wants. Okay. Mm-hmm. Once the traction comes, you can lay off a little bit more. Right, you know what I mean? right, right, so, right. Yeah, I think I, I operate under a lot of, like, uh, wrong preconceived notions about... So, I'm only on Instagram. Right, um, uh-huh. right, okay. And uh, I have, like, preconceived notions about the algorithm and how it works that are either just wrong or outdated and stuff. But I, I'll oftentimes, like, talk myself out of doing a post because I always think, like, so it's good to just post once a day. So I'll rattle some off and you tell me like true or false. So I think you just like one post a day is, is optimal, and then you know like you could sto- do that's stories fine. on top of that. Reels, Reels that is yeah, the that's what I hear. The and most also, important I, thing. I think this is a way outdated one, but I always heard like uh, like around five o'clock is always like the prime time to post, and I'm like always working at five. That's o'clock. that's a good time. I mean, it but that's of... so I'll, like I'll I'll be working through five o'clock. I'll like mm, I have yeah. a reminder on my phone actually mm. like post on Instagram like around five o'clock. Mm. And I fucking always miss it. So yeah. I'll, like I'll be working. And I'll finish at like eight or nine o'clock, and then I'll just be like, oh, maybe it's too late to post. So right. Like, I won't. And then like you know it's a vicious cycle, and the same thing yeah. happens again the next day. I would say if I had any advice to give to any anybody trying to grow on Instagram just post reels mm-hmm. everything else doesn't fucking matter yeah it's literally like that serious like shit like sometimes I'll go to my explore page and I see like a post of a picture of something that just has like has been circulating a lot I'll have like a lot of likes and I'll be like wow that's weird because I feel like I don't really like it's the chances of that happening is so slim but mm-hmm. because of TikTok yeah it's like Instagram was the, the you know what I mean the main man in town and then TikTok came around. It's like mm-hmm. oh we about to fucking take people off of your platform. As a result, now Reels because is the main competition with TikTok. They're pushing Reels because they know that if they don't TikTok will. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if you post Reels, if you mm-hmm. consistently post Reels, you will grow. Mm-hmm. Like when we when, like when I was t- telling telling like we got to fuck around with these Reels and shit. Where would we at? Like what was it, like four? It was not four. Like nineteen sixty something. Like oh followers. yeah, 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 yeah. Just about mm-hmm. in a span of like a week and a half, maybe or what? A week. Mm-hmm. We we got to two thousand. Yeah, it's not like <gasps> you know what I mean. It's like about like forty something followers, mm-hmm. but the reels was a difference because yeah. we were dormant for months. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And then what got you thinking that it was going to be real? Like, do you do you guys like look into like read like articles and stuff about like yeah, algorithms? This man right I'm, here. Yeah, I'm a, I'm obsessed with this shit. Okay. This is all. Of, this is like mainly all I think about, uh, with, along with food and and, and you know what I mean? <laughs> being a human. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I think sometimes this takes more of a pre- uh, the precedent 
for better or worse. But like, just posting like shit and not seeing it not go, as as you know, what I mean, fucked up as it is, we have this kind of we're posting on on these social media platforms. I want to say for validation, but to share. Mm-hmm. And then there's a inherent scoring system: likes, comments, this, that, and the third. If I'm posting. This shit don't do nothing. I'm going to learn, like, yo, fuck this. This shit don't do nothing anyway. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. This doesn't have any ties to my talent and I like that. At least that's what my logical brain thinks. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, somewhere deep down, I'm pretty sure that it's like every time I post, this shit don't do nothing. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. I think that if you just, like, uh, put your attention where it should be in regards to what the algorithm's actually looking for, it'll mitigate that whole, you know what I mean, process of like fuck i'm not doing this shit right uh just knowing like kind of like what we said earlier like in the very beginning knowing what the fuck you're supposed to be doing as opposed to just doing Mm -hmm. yeah doing with purpose is always better than just freestyling and so how do you uh like keep up with what the algorithms are uh i mean research for sure like research youtube videos Mm -hmm. uh um place like you know i mean even uh like pages on Instagram who kind of just talk about how to fucking keep doing well on Instagram or TikTok pages that recommend you certain things and with the with the uh, I guess the intention of growth and shit like that mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying people who've kind of just hacked the system because it's hackable when you know what you're looking for and then knowing it how to fit it into what you do yeah because what I do may not work for everybody. And mm-hmm. just like what you know, what I mean, certain people. You ever see like those people who be in like the city or fuck that, fuck the city. They be in like Dubai or some shit, and they got a drone shot yeah. going across them. And you got there, they got a white fucking you know linen kind of flowy <laughs> thing. I'm like, yo, I can't do this shit right now. <laughs> I'm not gonna put, I'm not gonna put a cap on myself. But that's not what I'm doing right now. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But I can do it in my way. Yeah, and I just feel like how kind of to what you were saying about like um, I don't remember the exact words, but kind of like you. Not the feeding into it, but basically what I'm saying is like now I feel like social media for at least when it comes to us, maybe other people is different. It's just like it's it's business related. It's not yeah. really about personal stuff. Yeah. Sure. You know what I'm saying? And that's how I feel like if you look at it that way, you throw out a bunch of this like I don't really care who's if, if like the person that I went to school with is seeing it because I'm not that's not the intention here. The intention is to get other people that don't know anything about anything that what we do to, to actually start finding out right you know Preach. what i'm saying it's way more like about if if that's what your goal is is business yeah that's straight up you know yeah, what i'm absolutely. saying yeah it's strictly a business account. exactly yeah. really and yeah. that's and and it's, it's it's more about like what you're saying about like being on it you know what i'm saying like because you can be on it just to scroll you can see like what they're doing you know who you know what they're doing like up to on the street whatever the case is but like that's that's different you know what i'm saying like that's you can waste hours on it like that but if you go in there for to do this mm-hmm. get it done and then keep pushing then it's like nah then then that's how you get the more people and stuff like that and it's a lot easier said than done for sure but like he said it's just just starting out and doing it without uh like those six extra minutes just do it maybe task yourself with like a week See how that goes, and then mm-hmm. you know, Every day push for it. A week, yeah. yeah, you know, mm-hmm. stuff like that. When you see growth, I ain't gonna lie, that shit just it just is what it kind of goes back to that that thing that we talked about. Accomplishment. Accomplishment. It's like, oh, now that I, you know, what I mean, I'm, I guess I'm doing my best to take my feelings out of it, and just looking at it as a as a task or something like that. If I'm mm-hmm. able to do this and I see forward motion and it feels good, and then I'm not gonna lie, after I started using it, uh, with the purpose of just putting silly childish videos out i don't use it as much for fuckery did i as i as i used to mm-hmm. yeah i'm not gonna say i mean i know people on instagram i have friends on instagram you know what i mean all that shit so i still you know i make an effort to see what the fuck's going on but i don't use it as much because it's like i post i go there check the comments because i know that commenting responding to comments help the algorithm mm-hmm. may look around i may not but dip off and do whatever the fuck else I have to do. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it becomes a little bit less, uh, I guess, personal. Because we've been using, like, social media for how long? Like, how long have you, you, I think, y'all been on social media? 
was, was it 2014 or was it 2012? I don't remember. Not even Instagram, yeah, social yeah, media. Facebook? Oh, MySpace? Yeah. Shit. Oh, shit. MySpace. It's been shit, yeah. Like, like 10, 12, maybe yeah. 14, 15 years. Easily, yeah. You know what I'm yeah, saying? That's, yeah. We never learned to use social media as a tool to as grow. As a tool as opposed for, to yeah. just mm-hmm. as a consumer. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. exactly. That's a fact. You got to look at it. Yeah, you got to like take yourself out of a consumer and be... I don't know. Supplier. <laughs> <Producer> supply. <laughs> Walter White. <laughs> so you guys ever think what you're gonna call the channel when you're not 20 anymore? If you like wasting my 30s? Yo, that's funny. We're gonna tackle that when we get there. <laughs> On the next episode. <laughs> Shit, man. My 30s. We got a few years, man. I hope by that then, by that time, you know. I hope they're. I hope they're not else. wasted at that point. You know. I mean, like, I mean, accomplished my 20s. Accomplished. <laughs> I feel like that was a self like. It was kind of like a, um, I was telling my brother this <laughs> day yesterday, it was like one of those things where it's like, you kind of like, not self-sabotage, but it's like, put the name out like this, all right, good luck. Because <laughs> yeah. if you wasted my 20s, you actually wasted 20s, you're in bad shape, bro. Yeah. You're in, you're literally working in order to counteract the, the title, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, that was it wasn't intentional but you know what it, I mean? it took that meaning it took that yeah, meaning facts. Cool. you okay. know what I'm saying yeah. but uh I feel like it's, it sounds like it's not even that apparent to people too right cause it's, it's, I guess for it's us, us. Yeah, 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 yeah. us yeah 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 us yeah I've had people like I can't support this yeah I've had like one person tell me that because of the title yeah, yeah. I'm like you kinda <laughs> literal it's not literal cause right? I feel like I don't know for me um it's apparent how much work we put into it and I just assume just how by how much yeah. we put out that it's kind of not obvious, but it's clear that we're, we're bro, like it's an ironic title. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I think. Game. I think it's not to me when I first saw the title, I was like, it's not, I understand that it's going to be, I guess, kind of like a lifestyle thing. It's like, I understand these guys aren't like taking themselves too seriously. Yeah. Okay. It's like a fun. Yeah. Living, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think that like, hopefully, if, you know what I mean? When, yeah. not nah, fuck that, when everything falls into place. I would love to just hand the keys to someone young. Yeah, or like yeah. have like being able to just get to a point where you just oversee, right, and not um, have to be so hands on. But if you want to be hands on, you can. Can be. be like, but like really, I don't know. I'd be thinking like, yo, I think that it might be like cool to see what somebody who's in their early twenties might their just direction. do. Yeah, they just do with it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I'm yeah. like at that point. I mean, we just want to pop in and see, oh, yes, okay, cool. Uh, maybe you could try, try this, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I want to just, I mean, yeah. by my 30s, I would like to have moved on and started something, you know what I mean, like different, maybe have a different I, like identity I'm trying to pursue mm-hmm. or something mm-hmm. like that, you know what I mean? Maybe I might be a fucking, you know what I'm saying, like a comedian, a comedian <laughs> fucking movie philosopher. director or some a shit. A philosopher, yeah. Like, Yo, are there any, mo- there are, but like, what's the modern name? Modern day philosophers just think about some out shit that's nobody's really in the forefront thinking about. I, mean, that's, I think the comedians are those, those philosophers. The philosophers, like, yeah. monk, like monks. And oh well, like yeah, that. yeah, that's yeah. the real, that's the real, real. But they're not on social media. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, y'all gotta get the marketing, man. Everyone <laughs> yeah. even have right? to ask this question. That's they're actually, I follow like oh, there's like a monk page. I don't know if the guy's an active monk. He's got like a YouTube channel and he touches all like, the day in the life of a monk. He's like, I think I know that's who dope. you're talking. I might, I'm not gonna say I do, but yeah. I think I've seen somebody. Yeah, Got a bald head, wears an orange robe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, sounds like the guy. <laughs> <laughs> Look at like that Avatar guy. Aang type. Yeah. yeah. Yo, man. So I ain't gonna lie. I think it's about that time. Yeah. yeah. So we do two things on our program. We uh, one, I guess, uh, start that one off. If you had a piece of advice to give to somebody who's starting out in your field, what would it be? Um, just work hard and don't get discouraged. I'll look at the camera. So there you go. Uh, <laughs> the work. camera actually died. That Did one. It? So we oh. been, yeah. I'll yell Ooh. at this one then. <laughs> uh, no, work hard. Uh, don't get discouraged by what uh, people around you are doing. Um, instead, try to get inspired by it. Um, just be humble. Always ask questions and uh, take care of your body. That's mm, always a, yeah. you know, sunblock. It's good advice. There you go. Sunblock. There you go. There you go. Sunblock. There you go. All right. block is slept on for real. <laughs> That's a fact. I'm still sleeping, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Um, second thing we do, shout out to Drink Champs. Kind of mm-hmm. got the, the, the inspiration from it. 
is that we like to do what we call give flowers. Give flowers. Uh, it could be flowers to a person. It could be flowers to a thing, an idea, an industry, whatever you think deserves some type of recognition. You know what I mean? We like to, we all go in our, you know what I mean? We all each give our flowers to something. And uh, it seems like... Uh, well, yeah. Why nah, me? Because you, you, you right gotta here. follow the sequence. There you go. Ah, man. All right. So I'm giving my flowers, huh? Yeah. yeah. There you go. It's all on the spot too, so don't yeah. even. Yeah. Like, I don't I even would know. Like, I always forget what to say. I would like to give my flowers to Kookaburra Coffee for having the best coffee supplying me and my boy Anthony. And I wish Fred didn't like coffee, but you know it's okay. <laughs> Shout out to their their cold brew with a little bit of white mocha, one raw sugar. You already know that's the order, baby. Yeah, Shout out I gave my flowers to them one time too. Yeah, fuck <laughs> a bangs with them, good people. Yeah, yeah. give them my flowers, to Kookaburra. Unofficial, um, nothing official, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, so, I'm just put that out there. Facts. I mean, there things go. can change, but you know, put it out there, put it out in the universe. Uh, <laughs> I, I give my flowers to, um, damn, I had it in a little bit, but I kind of lost it. But I'll just say anybody. It's kind of generic. I feel like we've done this a bunch of times, but it, it always it, it always is a banger to me. Mm-hmm. Like anybody who's pursuing something and are kind of just experiencing like the pitfalls of it, like don't get discouraged. You know what I mean? Obviously, shit wouldn't be easy. Or if, if, if it was easy, everybody would do it. You're supposed mm-hmm. to run into pitfalls. You're supposed to think about what the fuck am I doing this shit right? Or you're supposed to have these human thoughts of doubt or whatever the case is. Shout out to y'all. If y'all stay consistent and y'all do with intention, there's no way that you're going to fail. Mm. Mm-hmm. Talk about it. Um, yo, just because also I'm, we- I'm wearing this, I'm looking at my flowers to thrift stores because I caught this at a hey. thrift store. Actually, I got That's this a at a thrift one. store too, low hey. key. Hey. I love thrift stores, man. So shout out to thrift stores. I got to I gotta go do more of that uh, yeah, this got- season. It's about that time we gotta vlog that where you go. Yo, let us know if y'all want us to vlog like a, a thrift store adventure there it is there you go uh give my flowers to my mama because i wouldn't be here uh, uh, today without her has that been done before yeah i mean come on it's mom it's about yeah, you right, it's, it's about you i figured you know, it, it, yeah. I, I looked did. at the tat as right before you oh you yeah said. that yeah. i don't know if the camera can see hey, this one yeah. this is the first tattoo that i got and she did not like it she was just because it's a you know the anatomical play, yeah to play on that uh, a lot of people have it I, I was the first tattoo so i didn't know mm-hmm. she was like yeah she thought it was gross she likes a <laughs> her favorite tattoo of mine it's across my stomach it says trust your gut she like because she tells hey. everybody about it she just, thinks it's the funniest thing wait do you have a last waltz tattoo movie? yeah like the the documentary yeah one of my favorite movie. Nice. nice I love nice. that band and Scorsese. Shout to Scorsese, man. Sure. Hey. Flower, I'll give one flower to Martin Scorsese. Hey. Oh, okay. <laughs> there you go. Scorsese, yeah, 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 yeah. Man, listen, it's been a pleasure having this Absolute conversation. Pleasure. Thanks Might for having longest. me, guys. Yeah. I think it's the longest one, yeah. Yeah, I think that's a round of applause. Yeah. The longest podcast on the Waste of Podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to the new setup. Uh, <laughs> Just real quick before we sign off, I never like. Uh, will you guys like tag my social inner? Should I just say say? say, say oh no, oh, definitely, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Find yeah. me on Instagram. It's uh, at Cody Glenn Tattoos. Glenn's with two ends. Mm-hmm. Uh, hey. I'm a nice guy. I'm, I'm working on my page, as you know. If you listen to this, uh, <laughs> <laughs> throw me a like and uh, give me some feedback. Yeah, yeah. and pull up to Wild Child Tattoo. Yes, there you yeah. go. Yeah. Sunrise yeah. Highway, Merrick, New York. Boom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boom. Thank listen, you. Listen, yeah. it was a pleasure to have you. It's yeah. a pleasure to do this with my, my, my brothers right here, always. Yeah. Uh, if you're listening to this on Spotify, make sure that you mm-hmm. subscribe to the podcast as mm-hmm. well as Apple Music. Mm-hmm. If you're watching this on YouTube, whew, I love you. Yeah. You know what I mean, for sure. Make sure that you subscribe. Changes are, if, you watch, if you're listening to this part of it, you're definitely subscribed. Yeah, but that's in a the fact. slim event that you're not, please consider subscribing. You might yeah. like us if mm-hmm. you've gotten this far. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, be sure to follow us on all of our socials. They'll be plugged in the in the um, the disc, not the Discord, the description. Uh, description. But, <laughs> but, but hop on the Discord. Yeah, Discord also hop on the Discord. The Discord yeah. is fire. It is. All of yeah. the information is is located below. Word. And uh, just like that, we offer this. Catch you on the next one. Yeah. Nice. That was dumb. Yeah. <laughs>